Welcome and thank you for joining me. Firstly, I would like to begin by acknowledging that I am participating in this webinar from the lands of the Daruk. I also acknowledge the traditional custodians of the various lands from which you join me today and the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people participating in this webinar. I pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging and celebrate the diversity of our Aboriginal peoples and their ongoing culture and connections to the lands and waters of Australia. Thank you for joining me on this journey to find how we can power applications with GraphQL and AWS AppSync. But what does powering applications mean? You may be a developer that works with multiple data sources in different technologies, and you want to easily expose data from these different data sources to applications. Or you have multiple microservices and want a unified, secure gateway to access data from different microservices, with a single call abstracting the backend complexities for clients. Or you need to push data to, in real time to thousands of clients, but you don't have the time and resources to build and manage real-time infrastructure, web sockets, connection management, fan out, and ensure seamless scalability. How can you take these and many other types of applications to new heights without worrying about operations and the undifferentiated heavy lifting of infrastructure so you can focus directly on the application logic that will bring value to your business and your customers, as well as increase development velocity while doing so? Here's what we're going to talk about today to answer these questions. We'll start by quickly reviewing GraphQL as a technology. Then we'll talk about AWS AppSync and how it leverages GraphQL to provide a powerful and flexible serverless API solution. We'll go through some different use cases on how customers are powering their applications with AppSync in the real world in production at scale. And then we'll revisit some exciting features that we have released in the past months. After that, we'll explain how AppSync relates to Amplify. And finally, we'll talk about a prime example of how AppSync and Amplify integrate to make it very easy to power applications by providing a great experience for developers with a familiar programming model, abstracting the complexities of distributed cloud systems for offline scenarios, the Amplify data store. So what is GraphQL? GraphQL is a query language for APIs and a runtime to fulfill those queries. It's completely unrelated to graph databases as data is not persisted in the GraphQL layer. GraphQL is both an API component to expose and access data, as well as a compute or runtime component where developers can customize their own business logic directly at the API layer. There are two main technology choices for APIs today, REST or GraphQL. One is not better than the other. They both have strengths and weaknesses. You can definitely use them together in different parts of your application, and they are both excellent when used for the right thing. You don't build a house using just a hammer, and it's the same with distributed systems and applications. A picture is better than words to describe one of the main advantages of GraphQL. So let's imagine we have a blog posts application. With traditional APIs, in order to fetch the data to populate my front-end user interface, I need to make a call and get a list of the posts and post IDs, and then use one or more IDs to retrieve the comments, so I need to make a second call. Then if I need to get information about the authors, I need to make another API call to a third endpoint. In order to get the data that I needed, I had to make at least three API calls because I was either overfetching or underfetching data. With GraphQL, I only have one endpoint and I only need to make one single API call. The data is retrieved from multiple data sources automatically for me, and these data sources can be anything. SQL, NoSQL, HTTP, it doesn't matter. GraphQL is expressed as a declarative language for requesting data from your application's backends. It uses a typed system that allows you to understand data requirements and get meaningful error messages, making it easier to use and prototype. You define a GraphQL API with a schema based on a schema definition language, the schema is where you define different types, such as a user type and its properties of fields like we can see here. Using something called introspection, a client can also retrieve the schema and automatically understand how the API is documented. In, a, in the schema, you also define specific operations. There are only three types of GraphQL operations. Queries to read data, mutations to modify or write data, and subscriptions. Subscriptions are linked mutations and allow to send real-time notifications to subscribe clients whenever data is changed by a mutation. In blue, there's what we call the selection set. The selection set represents the collection of fields you define to be returned in a GraphQL operation, and that's another powerful feature of GraphQL. The client defines the selection set it needs. 
For instance, if I only need the ID and the title, I can define my selection set only with those two fields, so my client only gets exactly what it needs, saving on bandwidth and data retrieval times. Think how indexes work for a database query. The selection set can have a similar benefit for your GraphQL service. GraphQL looks awesome, right? What's the best way to use GraphQL on AWS? Well, you could run a GraphQL server and manage scaling and patching and failover and security, but is there a better way? With AWS AppSync, you can build scalable and robust applications on GraphQL with both real-time and offline capabilities. And best of all, no service to worry about. AppSync is a managed serverless GraphQL service, perfect for interacting with in application data. It connects to resources in your own AWS account, allowing you to make your data available in real time or offline. It can be used as a GraphQL facade to any AWS service. It also allows to perform conflict detection and resolution in the cloud instead of having to do it in the client. AppSync integrates with AWS Identity Access and Management, Cognito User Pools, any OpenID Connect compliant provider, or you can use the API keys, providing powerful options to secure access to your APIs. It's important to understand that AppSync is an application data service with real-time and offline features implemented over GraphQL with additional capabilities such as built-in authorization and conflict resolution. It's not simply a GraphQL API proxy. AppSync allows you to power your applications with the right data from one or more data sources at global scale. It simplifies application development by letting you create a flexible API to securely access, manipulate, and combine data from one or more data sources. That can be databases or other APIs. AppSync APIs can access data directly on DynamoDB NoSQL tables, Aurora serverless databases, or Elasticsearch clusters. Applications can access anything in your account using Lambda functions or even REST APIs with HTTP resolvers. You can easily have both REST and GraphQL in your back end. You can use HTTP resolvers to connect directly to other AWS services, such as step functions or event bridge via their regional endpoints. It's also possible to use local resolvers. Think of that as a pub sub channel where the data is not persistent. To get started, you need to model and define your data in a typed GraphQL schema. As the API can be organized into a simple and understandable graph schema, it allows you to better organize and understand your data and the data flow between different downstream components of your API. I mentioned that GraphQL has a built-in compute or runtime component where developers can customize their own business logic directly at the API layer. These components are called resolvers and they provide the logical glue between the data defined in the GraphQL schema and the data in the actual data sources. Let's talk about use cases and how customers are powering their applications using AppSync at scale in production. Hopefully you've already seen the presentations yesterday from Bitwise Agronomy and Magellan Digital and now I'd like to explore some further use cases. Starting with one of my favorite use cases, real-time. Real-time technologies enable users to receive information as it happens, providing rich, engaging, and collaborative experiences. One of the most important capabilities in AppSync is built-in support for real-time data. You can use AWS AppSync to enable scalable, real-time collaboration use cases by broadcasting data from the back end to all connected clients, one to many, or broadcasting data from clients and so, between clients themselves, many to many. For instance, you could have a Lambda function in the back end, retrieving data from an external source, such as another API or service, then sending a mutation to AppSync that will update a connected data source, for instance, a DynamoDB table. You can have thousands of clients subscribe to that specific mutation on AppSync, receiving a broadcast with the updates that are written to the table at the same time. AWS AppSync takes advantage of GraphQL subscriptions to perform real-time operations by pushing data to clients that choose to listen to specific events from the backend. This means that you can easily and effortlessly make any supported data source in AWS AppSync real-time, with connection management handled automatically between the client and the service. A backend service can easily broadcast data to connected clients, or clients can send data to other clients depending on the use case. Real-time data, connections, scalability, fan-out, and broadcasting are all handled by AppSync, allowing you to focus on your application business use cases and requirements instead of dealing with the complex infrastructure to manage WebSocket connections at scale. Whenever a client invokes a GraphQL subscription operation, a secure WebSocket connection is automatically established and managed by AppSync and will remain constantly connected to your backend, allowing users to receive real-time data from any supported AppSync data source. 
In one of our tests with our WebSockets engine, we managed to effortlessly reach 10 million active WebSocket connections on AppSync with plenty of room to scale to much more. You can use AWS AppSync to power collaborative and conversational applications. For example, you can build a mobile and web application that supports multiple private chat rooms, offers access to conversation history, and enqueues outbound messages even when the device is offline. One of our customers, Traber, help people with home renovation project management. Using AppSync, their users are able to message in real time with the various contractors working on their project. Now let's move to microservices. What happens when you need to expose specific data from multiple microservices? GraphQL is agnostic to data source technologies, allowing to easily abstract them for different applications. A very powerful use case for AppSync is that you can retrieve or modify data from multiple polyglot data sources such as SQL and NoSQL and different downstream APIs with a single call. Qu query and create relations between different data sources using GraphQL connections. You can use AWS AppSync as a single interface to connect and aggregate multiple microservices in your application. AWS AppSync can act as a data layer and interface to connect and communicate seamlessly with multiple microservices, even if they're running in different environments or AWS accounts. We recently released a reference AppSync microservices architecture, where a single AppSync API interacts with a REST API and API Gateway, another AppSync a GraphQL API, and services running on Fargate containers in a VPC. AWS AppSync built-in features are used to securely access, modify, consolidate, route, and map data from different microservices as a single unified gateway, providing data to clients that just need to be aware of a single GraphQL endpoint in the cloud. The data is correlated and linked by different services to a specific user, using the unique JWT tokens that Cognito generates for each session. Best of all, you can try it in your AWS account because it's a reference architecture with one click. At AWS, we're using AppSync to run our own projects. One of the fun things we get to do with customers is to run AWS Game Day events, where teams compete and collaborate to solve problems for the largest provider of mythical creature hire in the world, Unicorn Rentals. AppSync is central to the 2020 edition of the game that's under development, providing participants with near real-time information on the status of their unicorns, how they are performing in inter-team gameplay, and the availability of unicorns on the marketplace. We used a REST API gateway for the straightforward data manipulations involved and leveraged AppSync to make the real-time updates as simple as updating a database entry. Importantly, AWS lets you pick the right tool for the job. We talked about real-world scenarios and use cases where customers are powering applications with a scalable, secure, and reliable GraphQL API provided by AWS AppSync. We have customers in all sorts of industries and verticals, leveraging the GraphQL advantages. Media and entertainment, sports, e-commerce, healthcare, transport, education, and more. Let's move on now to a quick recap on some exciting features our team launched recently. With local mocking, you can run AppSync locally in your laptop, model your data, prototype queries, and, when you're ready, deploy and create your AppSync API in the cloud. When AppSync was released, you could only have a single authorization mechanism per API. You could use OpenID Connect, Cognito, Cognito User Pools, IAM, or API keys per API. Some people had to duplicate APIs for public and private access, as it wasn't possible to mix and match different authorization providers. Now you can have a global authorization mode, and you can also add multiple additional authorization providers. The most powerful capability is to be able to assign specific prov providers to different types or even fields in a type. For instance, I can have a type where some fields can be accessed with an API key, however the user must be authenticated with Cognito user pools to have access to the user email field. Best of all, you get partial responses through the selection set allowing the client to access only the data it has permission to access, so I can define security directly from my data definition in a GraphQL schema. With the click of a button, AppSync provides built-in server-side caching capabilities for any supported data source, improving the performance of latency-sensitive and high-throughput applications, and allowing developers to fetch data from a fast, in-memory managed cache, delivering data at low latency. It's possible to cache the entire API dataset retrieved from one or more data set sources, and it also offers the flexibility to selectively cache specific data fields that change less frequently. We also released integration with CloudWatch Logs Insights, allowing you to get very useful information about your API usage. CloudWatch Logs Insights enables you to interactively search and analyze your log data in Amazon CloudWatch Logs. 
Best of all, there are useful sample queries that allow you to get started in no time. In this example, I can access the most frequently invoked operations and resolvers in my AppSync API. It helps me understand and identify hotspots. Earlier this year, we released integration with AWS X-Ray, enabling full end-to-end -end tracing support for AppSync APIs. You can enable X-Ray in your APIs to get an end-to-end -end view of the entire request and visibility on the performance bottlenecks in components and modules. We talked about development velocity and how AppSync allows you to increase it. However, it's also very important to have powerful development tooling to do so, and that's where Amplify comes in. Some people think that Amplify is AppSync or AppSync is Amplify. The Amplify and AppSync teams are in the same organization. As a matter of fact, in the office, the two teams are literally next door to each other. They work close together, but they are still different teams. In a nutshell, AppSync is a back-end GraphQL service, and Amplify allows front-end developers to quickly configure, deploy, query, and interact with AppSync APIs in minutes. The Amplify framework provides a set of developer tools, libraries, and UI components, as well as a powerful command line interface to build and manage cloud backends, easily integrating with your iOS, Android, web, and React Native apps, as well as a web hosting console service to deploy and host web applications. The framework allows you to deploy and interact with cloud services based on intuitive categories. There's no need to know AWS service constants, concepts. For instance, no need to know the S3 provides storage or Cognita provides authentication. You don't need to be a cloud architect to create an app on AWS with Amplify. As far as the framework components are concerned, the client library, CLI, and UI components are fully open source. There is support for developing your GraphQL applications locally, so you don't need to upload changes to AWS to test out your latest features and fixes. There are also managed developer services such as the Amplify console that allows you to deploy and host web applications and Device Farm, which allows you to test your application on real mobile devices or real web browsers. These are the Amplify categories. Some categories, such as the data store and predictions, were released late last year. However, there are two specific categories closely related to AppSync, data store and the GraphQL option in the API category. In my opinion, one of the most powerful Amplify CLI tools is the GraphQL Transform. The GraphQL Transform provides a simple to use abstraction that helps you quickly create backends for your web and mobile web applications on AWS, all based on a GraphQL schema you define. The Transform uses directives that you can associate with the types or fields in a GraphQL schema. How does it work? You just need to define a data type or multiple types with their respective fields in a GraphQL schema file. The GraphQL transform allows me to use specific schema directives in my new data type. If I include the app model directive and push the changes, a CloudFormation stack creation is started, and a GraphQL API pre-configured with all the necessary CRUD logic, that is create, read, update, delete, to interact with the data in a linked DynamoDB table is automatically created in minutes. However, this might not be enough as API calls are authorized only with API keys by default. How can I improve my security posture and have a proper identity provider authenticating and authorizing my all, all of my API calls? It's as easy as adding another directive, at auth, with specific rules. In this case, I just want the user that created the data to be able to access and modify it. Alternatively, I can specify groups such as an admin group, for instance, that can have extra access. After I commit the changes and update my backend with a single command, a Cognito user pool is created and automatically configured to authenticate and authorize calls to my API. So now going one step further, I have a secure, scalable, serverless API that provides me with authenticated CRUD access to my data. What if I need to add search capabilities to my backend? For those not familiar with Elasticsearch, configuring and installing a cluster can be challenging. What if I could do it just by adding one extra line to my API type definition? That's exactly what is possible with the at searchable directive. I just need to push my changes once more, and an Elasticsearch cluster as well as a DynamoDB streams and a Lambda function are all deployed and configured automatically, handling the data synchronization between the data in DynamoDB and Elasticsearch. With a few CLI commands and a couple of schema directives based on GraphQL transforms, AWS Amplify CLI created a very powerful, secure, highly available, flexible, resilient, and scalable backend in minutes, where users can be authenticated and authorized using AdAuth, then create, read, update, delete, and list data using AppModel, 
as well as perform full text search using Ad Searchable on that same data very easily and very fast. Best of all, the whole backend is managed by AWS and you don't have to worry about any maintenance or operational tasks. If you want to dive deeper on the transform, I suggest you watch the next presentation, Transforming GraphQL. My friend Rob will deep dive on the transform and data access patterns. The CLI also has very handy automatic code generation capabilities for AppSync APIs. CodeGen helps you generate native code based on your AppSync API for iOS and Android, as well as a generation of types for Flow, JavaScript, and TypeScript. It can also generate all GraphQL statements, queries, mutations, and subscriptions so that you don't have to hand code them. There's also a directive that can be used to power your application with AIML, orchestrating logic to multiple AWS AI services with a single GraphQL call. Imagine that I want to add image recognition to my application, then identify any text in the image, translate it to a specific language, and finally speak the text in my app. With app predictions, I just need to add these AI-related actions, and they are executed in sequence as defined in the schema. I can have an AI-enabled API deployed in minutes and easily interact with it with only a few lines of code using the Appify clients on my front end. Predictions leverage pipeline resolvers on AppSync. AppSync executes resolvers on a GraphQL field, as we discussed previously. In some cases, applications require executing multiple operations to resolve a single GraphQL field. With pipeline resolvers, developers can compose operations, orchestrate, and execute them in sequence. In this example, the pipeline resolver is called calling recognition to identify the text in an image. Then it saves it into what's called the stash. The data in the stash persists through the pipeline. The text from the stash then is passed to the second function in the pipeline. That calls translate to translate the text. That then it calls poly to perform text to speech, all in a single GraphQL API call, interacting with three different AWS services, saving network bandwidth and resources. Now, if you're a mobile developer, this symbol may make you shudder. Let's talk about the last AppSync use case we'll discuss in this session, very useful to power modern applications, seamless offline and data synchronization support. You can synchronize data between mobile and web apps in the cloud using GraphQL when you're offline, leveraging AWS AppSync built-in support for data versioning and advanced conflict detection and resolution strategies. The Amplify Data Store is a queryable local on-device data store for web, IoT, and mobile developers using iOS, Android, and React Native running on device or in browsers. When combined with the AWS AppSync, developers have a simple programming model where they can easily reason about consistency and data integrity and can interact with data seamlessly, whether you're online or offline. These capabilities allow developers to in interact with native domain objects in Java, Swift, and JavaScript, which are automatically converted to GraphQL behind the scenes. AppSync also provides automatic delta synchronization and auto-merge on objects synchronized across devices using the GraphQL type system. The data store is provides a persistent on-device storage repository for you to write, read, and observe changes to data locally in web or native mobile apps. It can be used standalone without any cloud capabilities. The magic happens when you enable the cloud capabilities in the data store with a single command. If a developer chooses to sync with the cloud, the Amplify CLI will use the GraphQL schema to automatically deploy an AWS AppSync API backend with DynamoDB tables for each type and an additional table used for Delta Sync, which is a journal that tracks changes to the application. This all happens without having to change the client-side code. Talking about familiar programming models, the data store doesn't require developers to know how to code GraphQL on the client side. It provides simple constructs that are then converted to GraphQL automatically behind the scenes. As you can see, I can interact with my data with a couple of lines of code. With AppSync, you can start effortlessly with your GraphQL journey on AWS. It scales with the business and you just pay for what you use. It provides powerful built-in real-time and offline capabilities, allowing you to unify and secure access to multiple data sources, APIs, and services. Amplify provides fantastic development tooling and integrations with AppSync with the Amplify Data Store, GraphQL Transform, local mocking, and automatic code generation. If you're curious to learn more about how AppSync is being used, check this link. We have presentations and videos from customers explaining their architecture and how they are powering their applications with GraphQL and AWS AppSync at scale. I hope you have learned something new about building modern applications and wherever your destination, AppSync can help your application to get there. Thank you very much for your attention.